I, so more on visualization. How do you actually visualize? Some people say, I can't visualize anything. I've never been able to. My mind is a complete blank. I've never been able to while I'm sleeping and it's just not something that's possible for me. Bullshit. You can't hardly think without visualizing to some degree. Whenever you think of something, whatever pops up in your head, even though it's not that clear, if you can get some kind of a sense of the form or color of something, or when you're able to recognize something, that's that's all visualization. People like to think they're special, that, oh, this doesn't apply to them, that I'm actually missing something that everyone else has, and therefore I'm a special case. But you're not. Everybody's pretty much the same. You might just be really bad at this and you need to improve your abilities to what you're capable of. And so here's the wrong way to visualize. When you close your eyes and say you keep your eyes just pointed straight ahead, you see a dark field, you're basically looking at the back of your eyelids and you try to form an image there in the darkness or the relative darkness. Okay, that's not gonna work very well. Think about when you think of something else and instantly some kind of impression pops up in your head. Think of it more as in the back of your head because when you're trying to look with your eyes onto the back of your closed eyelids, you're engaging your eyes too much and that's not where vision happens. You're trying to engage the visual centers of your brain that don't have to do with your eyes. Your eyes aren't going to feed this. It's When you visualize, it's totally created in your mind and you know this. You just have the habit of trying to use your eyes to do this for some reason. And whatever the object is that you're visualizing, whatever you want to visualize, don't try to draw it. You just think of it and consider the different parts of it and just let wait and let it pop into your head. It might take some time, it might not happen, but you have to give it time recognizing that your subconscious mind really is the thing that's going to bring this up. You're not going to be able to consciously draw it in any way inside your head. So more specifically, a couple things you can try. So look briefly at, say, say you've got an eye chart, just for simplicity's sake. Um, an eye chart works good because it's got a lot of, it's got deep contrast between the black letters and the white background. And it's got relatively simple, recognizable objects on it. So you can use anything you want. Just as an example on the eye chart, say you're looking at the letter D. Look at it just for a few seconds noticing anything about it that you can it's its color it's uh, roughly its shape anything you can notice about it and it's got to be a letter on the chart that you can sort of recognize you might not be able to read it but you can see something there it's got to be enough to work with not just a big massive blur because that's going to be too hard for you so then close your eyes and visualize what the D might look like if it were clear and visualize different parts of it. What would the top look like? In doing this, you don't have to, you're not trying to create the image um, directly. Just you're thinking about, you're considering what the top would look like. You don't have to see the top as rounded. You don't have to see the right side as rounded. Just say, well, I know the right side of the D is rounded and the left side is straight. And as you do that, your mind's gonna be working and it's gonna be trying to create that in your head. Then open your eyes and glance at the D again just for a few seconds. See if you can notice anything about it. it doesn't matter what type of thing you can notice, either um, the contrast of the white against the black uh, around a certain part of the D or the, the inside of the D the way the top of the D uh, on the left side kind of sticks out depending on the font, uh, the general shape of the D, but hopefully something at least more specific that you can take note of. Uh, it doesn't even have to be that significant, but uh, you're basically just kind of using that to feed your inner image. It's getting more data that you can work with uh, that your mind can use to create an image so then close your eyes, 
do the same thing you did before. Think of different parts of the D, taking into account the thing that you just noticed with your eyes open. Um, see if maybe you can incorporate that a little bit. If not, doesn't matter. After a moment, open your eyes and uh, see if you can notice something else about it. Say maybe it looks a little bit different. The way your, uh, you know, the way the blur comes in might be a little bit different. And see if you can just notice some other little attribute about it. Close your eyes again. Keep repeating. You can also do this just while keeping your eyes open if you can. Look away from the object and think about what you just looked at, uh, spe more specifically parts of what you just looked at. Don't try to see the whole D at once. Uh, sometimes that can work, but really your attention has to move around to different parts of it. And then you can actually look at the D when you're ready. I mean, you can try this at any point, but these are just kind of progressive steps you can do that um, to work toward a more natural way of seeing. You can uh, you look directly at the D while you're visualizing the D. So you're, you're seeing and you're visualizing the same thing, basically. It's got to be pretty clear, for, of course, for it to match up perfectly. But even if it's not clear, you just note what you see and just you're really focusing on what's in your head and you're not trying to make the image that your eyes are getting clearer because when you try to use your inner image to make your eyes see better like I've got this inner image now see that's actually backwards the image that you see is always in your head and you really gotta I know I keep repeating that throughout these videos but I'm trying to make the impression on you that it does no good to strain your eyes to try to see because all it is is data that's coming in that the, the important thing is what's going on inside your mind with the image now eventually your eyes are gonna have to focus the image too but that's done by your subconscious mind you don't have direct control over that I'm just thinking of actually Jacob Lieberman, an optometrist, he was um, who's into natural vision improvement, he's done all kinds of stuff, but he has in his book, uh, Take Off Your Glasses and See, he wrote about where he was in his office, he was doing something, all of a sudden he just saw, because he was myopic, and all of a sudden he just saw perfectly, and he took his equipment, measured his eyes, his equipment said he was still myopic, looked around, he wasn't which was really interesting it's hard to say exactly what was going on there um, you know I'm not a optometrist I don't know how to use that equipment uh, maybe uh, maybe his eyes were kinda shifting back and forth between focused and defocused while he was measuring it I don't know but you know what just for the sake of argument let's just say your eyes do have to focus the image at some point and that's fine and your mind will direct your eyes to do that when it's working well and one sign that it's working well is when you visualize so you can try doing what I described uh, as many times during the day as you want and uh, you know what you might get results while you're doing it you might notice later in the day that oh you know what I think what I was doing earlier actually had an effect and then uh, at night you can, while you're laying down going to sleep, really there's no excuse not to try doing it. Just um, that's really the perfect time um, because you should be able to relax enough and get your mind into a state where it's actually easier to visualize while you're going to sleep. You're kind of those in one of those uh, altered states of consciousness in between asleep and awake and then it might even carry over if you're really thinking about it if you're really kind of involving yourself in it it might carry over to when you're asleep and you'll keep doing it and really that's you're gonna get a lot out of it that way so just some tips again and let me know what you think leave your comments below thank you